Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha our Mashiach, his voice. Hear, O Yasharal. Yahuwah our mighty one is one Yahuwah. This is Brother David coming to you again to ask the question. Are there different species of humans on this planet? This is part seven, the target, the melanated woman, the black woman. Before we begin, I must make this statement. This is an Israelite channel, a Yasharalite channel. I have not been sent to anyone else but the lost sheep of the house of Yasharor, those who have been trodden down, those who have been taken captive and been taken around the world in ships and been treated evil for 400 years. If you fit that criteria, you are who I came for. Let's get back to our video. The target. She is the target of every being that's come on this planet. I want to paint you a picture so that you can understand what this is all about. Yahuwah defeated Satan. There was war in heaven. And Satan and one third of the angels in heaven rebelled against Yahuwah and Yahuwah defeated them and cast them to the earth. Then Yahuwah created Adam and placed him in the garden in the midst of his enemies. What enemies? Who was there? Satan and one third of the angels that fell. Yahuwah gave Adam dominion over everything. You've read that in Genesis, correct? Even the fallen ones was under the dominion of Adam. Do you think they liked that? There was hatred even from that point. Then Yahuwah created the woman. He saw that Adam was alone, that he needed a helper. And he brought out of Adam's loins a seed, brought it to full, to grow it to its full grown. He presented this glowing creature to Adam. And Adam says, Yahuwah is my shepherd. <laughs> Man, I see what I want. He embraced her and they became one. He would have done anything for her. Remember, he was alone for so long. And then here she comes in his life. Now there is joy. Satan saw this. He created a scheme. He targeted the woman. He knew that she was new in the family. She had low information. This is why you have to educate yourselves, brothers and sisters, that she had low information, so he targeted her. Her. He beguiled her to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She ate of the tree. She came back and presented herself to Adam and told him what she had done. Adam's heart fell. He knew that she would be expelled from the garden. He knew that she would die and that he would be alone again. 
he also knew something else. If she is expelled from the garden, who's out there waiting to destroy her? The others. He gave himself as a ransom. He is the first savior of humanity. He gave himself as a ransom for her and ate of the tree also. Shaul confirms this in the New Testament. He tells you that Eve was deceived. Adam was not deceived. Eve was the one who was in the transgression. Adam gave himself gave his life for his woman. Then after they sinned, they came out the garden, they had children. Daughters were born unto them. The watchers came down from heaven, left the estate in which they were created. They were with Yahuwah for who knows how, lo- how many millennia. They saw these women the glowing ones. They saw that they were beautiful and they took wives of all which they chose. They probably said, I want the one with the Afro. And they brought forth children unto them. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, after what? Before the flood and after the flood. There was wickedness. These giants were drinking blood. They were eating other people. Yahuwah sent a great deluge to cleanse the earth of this parasitic organism. The only ones that were left were pure bloodline human beings that came from Adam, Noah, and his three sons. Now, after the flood, the Bible says that this happened again. Satan. There's no place mentioned that he had sex with the woman, but we know something. He's into genetically modifying organisms. He is not Yahuwah, but He was with Yahuwah. He learned some things. Yahuwah takes nothing and makes something. Satan takes what Yahuwah has already made and makes it into something else, genetically modifying the organism. It is said in conjecture, in theory, that he took this monkey and added his DNA to this monkey and brought forth a hybrid species, a new creature, a hominid that was on the planet. And he placed them on the earth. He tried repeatedly, but he could not perfect them the way that Adam and Eve were perfect. Then he found something out. If I were to take the species in which I were create, which I have created and place that seed inside of the woman's womb, this black woman, you know, this black girl with the magical womb, that I could correct some of the errors, some of the mutations that I cannot figure out how to fix. So he placed this seed into this woman, this melanated woman, this black woman, and brought forth a new hybrid, a hybrid between the seed of the fallen one and the seed of Adam. Everyone needed This woman, what did they call her? Mitochondrial Eve that came from sub-Saharan Africa in order to bring forth their seed. Let's begin. Black Eve. What do they call her today? 
mitochondrial Eve. We're not talking about the Eve that was with Adam. Now we're speaking after the flood. Do you see this picture here? Have you ever heard the term that a picture speaks a thousand words? This picture is screaming at us. Now this picture is attached to a PDF. In the PDF, it states that the geneticists, they were experimenting with plants. They found that the plants have gender. So they decided to genetically modify the organism and mix the species and bring forth hybrid plants. Then they came up with this great idea. Could this have been how we came on the human stage? Yeah. So they created this picture. Look at it. Eve, what color is she? She is black. And look at Adam. He is white. Now we understand about whiteness from the geneticists, from DNA. We understand that white skin came from the other humans. This picture that you're looking at here is not the Garden of Eden. This is the European Garden. This is from their perception. Look what else this picture is going to say. Look to your left. Look standing by the tree there. A hominid species. If this picture is talking to us, what is it saying? Who claims to have evolved from apes and grew into a hominid? You have the monkeys here on the tree, all over the place. Then you have a hominid species by the tree. Then when you come back to the right, you have the white Adam with the black Eve. They're telling us something here. That they evolved from monkeys, became a hominid, then they became this white Adam. They went into the black woman's womb. And now they're on the human stage. What do they call themselves? The other humans. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to 4. Let's look at the revelation through scripture, which people said was lies. Now we know it's truth. Verse 1, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. Daughters are mentioned. Why are they mentioned here and not mentioned too much in other parts of the Bible? Look in verse 2, that the sons of the mighty ones saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took them wives of all which they chose because the target of the fallen ones were the daughters. Verse 3 And Yahuwah said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. We used to live for five, six, eight hundred years. Our time was shortened. Why? Because these angels came in and mixed their seed with ours. Verse 4 there were giants in the earth in those days. So in those days, there were giants. They were wicked. They were cruel. They were drinking blood. They were eating people. Look what it's going to say next. And also after that. So this is before the flood and after the flood when the sons of the mighty one came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown, Achilles, Hercules, 
Zeus, Poseidon, Hades. These are your mighty men of renown. They try to say it's mythology, but these were the giants of old. Genesis chapter 4, verse 8 to 12. Let's go back. Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Now we all know this story. But when you go back towards the beginning of this chapter, you find that when Eve brought forth Cain, she worshipped and praised Yahuwah. This was a great event. She said, I have begotten a son from Yahuwah. Why does she say from Yahuwah? Because the seed that was given to Adam comes from Yahuwah. You have the people who comes from Yahuwah's seed, and then you have the ones that come from Satan's seed. Now, we also find out that daughters were born unto Eve. She probably had litters of daughters, and they came first. This is why it was such a great event to see that the seed, the bloodline, would be continued because men were born. Verse 9. And Yahuwah said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? They were born at the same time according to the text. Cain came first. Abel came after. But look at what Yahuwah is doing here. He's asking questions that he already knows the answer to. I practice this myself. And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Look at the disrespect that he's showing towards the master of the universe, the creator of all things. You know, I find that amongst our people. When you speak to Yahuwah, you have to have a reverence, a respect. Get down on your hands and knees, head bowed to the ground to speak to him. He is the author and the finisher of your salvation. I have people who come even on the comment board seeking answers to their query, yet do not know how to frame their questions in a respectful way. Verse 10. And he said, who said? Yahuwah. What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. You see that? The blood cries out. The seed, it cries out. That DNA, it will cry out to Yahuwah. Verse 11. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Because his brother, brother's blood was received of the earth. Look what's going to happen in verse 12. Because of his sin. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a va vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. 13. And Cain said unto Yahuwah. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Verse 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. He wasn't taken off the earth. The earth that they knew was only this hedge of protection, the place where Yahuwah had given them. And from thy face shall I be hid. Yahuwah's eye is always upon the promised land. So he must be going outside of the promised land. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. What did you say, Cain? Who was on the earth? 
Who's this every one? Let's see. We had Adam. We had Eve. We had Cain and Abel. Cain slew Abel. We know they had many daughters that were born unto them. Who was he talking about? The others. This was a scary event. They knew that the giants were in the land. They were eating people. They were drinking blood. There was wickedness on this planet. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Verse 15. And Yahuwah said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And Yahuwah set a mark upon Cain. I wonder what that mark was lest anyone finding him should kill him. Verse 16, And Cain went out from the presence of Yahuwah and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Enoch, or Chanak, Kanak. 105, verse 1 to 6. This is the last chapter in the book of Chanak. Now, the Europeans state that this book should not be included in canon. Who gave them the authority to make that decision? To the conqueror goes the spoils, correct? And the power. They have conquered. They are ruling. They have decided to take this book out. Why? because it exposes too many things. Now this book is in the Ethiopic text, the oldest surviving manuscript or book or Bible is in Ethiopia, not in the Roman Catholic Church. And it is still included in canon. Let's see what this book is going to tell us why they went through so much to try to destroy the validity of this book. Verse 1. And after some days, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became, verse 2, pregnant by him and bore a son. And his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. And the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool. And his eyes were beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun. And the whole house, verse 3, was very bright. And thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with Yahuwah of righteousness. Verse 4. And his father, Lamech, was afraid of him. Verse 5. And fled and came to his father Methuselah. And he said unto him, I have begotten a strange son. Let's stop here. What made this child strange? We have to go back to verse 2. His body, white as snow, and red as the blooming of a rose. His hair of his head, he had these long locks, and it was white like wool. And his eyes were beautiful, gray eyes, blue eyes green eyes. Let's see what else Lamech says. He's diverse. You know what the word diverse means? Different from and unlike man. 
What makes him different and unlike man? Let's go back to verse 2 again. His skin was white as snow and red as a rose. The hair of his head was long locks which were white as wool. His eyes were gray eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. And resembling the sons of the God or the mighty one of heaven. What do they look like, Brother David? Their bodies were white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. The hair of their head was long and white as wool, and his eyes, beautiful, gray eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. And his nature is different. And he is not like us. How many times have we said the same thing about the Europeans? They're not like us. Whether in the way they look, the way they speak, or the way they carry themselves, they're not like us. Here, Lamech is saying the same exact thing. What made the child, what made his nature different and not like men? His body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. The hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool and his eyes beautiful. Gray eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. And his eyes are as the rays of the sun. And his, verse 6, countenance is glorious. And it seems to me that he is not sprung from me, but from the angels. Lamech thought that his wife was taken by the fallen ones. Do you see this? When Lamech saw this child, he was afraid. He ran. He didn't embrace this. It was something new different, never seen before amongst human beings, amongst the ones that Yahuwah has placed here. But it was seen amongst the children of the fallen ones. They knew they existed. They stayed away from them. And I fear that in his days a wonder may be aught of anxiety have I come to thee. And because of a disturbing vision. Now you see why they took this book out. Is the description. I mean, can you argue with this description? He was a pinkish color. That's what the blooming of a rose is. His skin is white. And yet he has this pinkish you hmm this is what Lamech saw I'm afraid don't you think that Lamech was afraid just think amongst heavily melanated people that were created from the earth that can relate to the material realm, that can stand in the UV rays and absorb the energy from the sun. And now you have a baby that looks like this, different from men. This is why he was afraid. Verse 7. And because of a disturbing vision wrought on the earth, and now, my father, I am here to petition thee and implore thee that thou mayest go to Enoch, our father, and learn from him the truth. For his dwelling place is amongst the angels. And when Methuselah heard the words of his son, he came to me to the ends of the earth, for he had heard that I was there, and he cried aloud, 
and I heard his voice, and I came to him. And I said unto him, Behold, here I am, my son. Wherefore hast, verse 9, thou come to me? And he answered and said, Because of a great cause of anxiety have I come to thee, and because of a disturbing vision. Verse 10, have I approached. And now, my father, hear me. Unto Lamech, my son, there have been born a son, the like of whom there is none. Amongst men, they had never seen a child born that looked like this. This was something new. The child, Noah, Noach, was the first albino born to human beings. Watch this. And his nature is not like man's nature. What do you mean? This is Methuselah speaking to Enoch. What made his nature different? His skin was white as snow, yet it was red as the blooming rose. His hair was long and white. His eyes were glorious. And the color of his body is whiter than snow and redder than the blooming of a rose. And the hair of his head is whiter than white wool. And his eyes are like the rays of the sun, and he opened his eyes, verse 11, thereupon lighted up the whole house. And he arose in the hands of the midwife, and opened, verse 12, his mouth, and blessed Yahuwah of heaven. Wow. This was some event. This is something new. They had never seen anything like this. This is why Lamech was afraid. And his father, Lamech, became afraid and fled to me, ran, and did not believe that he was sprung from him. He thought that his wife was taken by the fallen ones. They were already on the planet. They had already taken daughters. They had already brought forth their seed, but that he was in the likeness of the angels of heavens, in the likeness of the seed of the fallen angels. And behold, I have come to thee, that thou mayest make known to me the truth. And I, Enoch, answered and said unto him, yeah, man, that's your son. This is what Lamech was looking at. Even to this day, albinos exist. Stripped of melanin. Look at the hair, white like wool. Whiter than wool, to tell you the truth. Eyes, glorious. He said that this is what the seed of the fallen ones would look like. Now do you see why they took it out the text? Yahuwah will do a new thing on the earth. And this I have already seen in a vision, something new. The first albino born to men. Black girl magic out of the womb of this black woman you can get every color of the spectrum and make known to thee that in the generation of my father Jared some of the watchers of heaven transgressed the word of Yahuwah and behold they committed sin and transgressed the law and have united themselves with women and commit sin with them. Ladies, if you unite yourself to them, you have committed sin. He told us. 
not to unite ourselves to them. Don't think I'm pointing a finger at you. For I have committed this sin myself. But I've come out of it. And I've returned back to my father and keeping his ways. I remember when I was young, my mother told me not to join with these people. I thought she was prejudiced. I said, she's low information. She don't know nothing. You know how it is when you're young. You think you know it all. She was right all along. And have married some of them. And have begotten children by them. And they shall produce on the earth giants. Not according to the spirit. But according to the flesh. Not spiritual giants. But giants in height. And there shall be a great punishment on the earth. And the earth shall be cleansed from all impurity. Yea, there shall come a great destruction over the whole earth. Let's stop there. This is impure. This is unclean. This is evil. This is wickedness. Yahuwah had to cleanse the earth of this parasitic organism because of what they were doing. They were drinking blood. They were eating flesh. They were killing. What a terrible time. Yahuwah sent a deluge, the flood, to cleanse the earth of this impurity. Verse 16. And a great deluge, a great destruction for one year. And this son who has been born unto you shall be left on the earth. And his three children shall be saved with him when all mankind that are on the earth, verse 18, shall die. Who's going to die? Everyone who is mixed with this bloodline. Yahuwah had to cleanse the earth of this parasitic organism. That's what he's telling you right here. He and his sons shall be saved. What is the difference between this and the book of Genesis is telling you the exact same thing with more details, brothers and sisters. We know that only Noah and his three sons were saved. And now make known to thy son Lamech that he who has been born is in truth his son and call his name Noach. For he shall be left to you, and he and his sons shall be saved from the destruction which shall come upon the earth on the account of all the sin and all the unrighteousness which shall be consummated on the earth in his days. Look at this. I've highlighted the whole thing. Let's read. This is a revelation. And after that, what do you mean after that? After the flood, there shall still be more unrighteousness than that which was first consummated on the earth. You mean to tell me that after that it's going to be more wicked than it was before? Who are the people who are ruling today? Who is poisoning the water? Who is poisoning the air? Who is creating genetically modified seeds? Who is killing in numbers that have never been seen before and committing genocide across the planet? For I know the mysteries of the Holy Ones. For he, Yahuwah, has showed me and informed me. And I have read them in the heavenly tablets. This was already known that it would come to pass. 
Yahuwah knows the future. There is nothing unknown to him. But he lets these things play out so that you can be cleansed of this unrighteousness. So you can be tried as silver is tried and refined as gold is refined. You have to go through the fire to be saved, brothers and sisters. You have to endure this world that is being created by the others to the end. So let's use this brother as our Lamech. He had his first son, you see there? And then here comes another that is born unto him. Skin as white as snow, yet red as a rose. Eyes glorious, hair white and long. Well, you don't have that here, but you get the concept. Out of this woman's womb, all people are introduced on the human stage. Out of that womb, one black woman, she can have a black baby and a white baby. <laughs> Twins. We know this from who? Jacob and Esau? Jacob was the black one and Esau was red and hairy all over. Yahuwah said he was going to do a new thing. He brought forth Noach to do this new thing. Why would he do something new like this? If Noah was to build this ark, it took 120 years to do so. And the watchers and the seed of the fallen ones were upon the earth. It would be beneficial to Noah to look like them. When they saw Noah toiling away, they saw him and they said, oh, He's one of us. Leave him alone. This is the mystery that has been hidden from us for all of these years, brothers and sisters. But these are the last days. Knowledge is greatly increased. And to our European friends, don't get upset. Don't get angry. You didn't know. We know you don't know. This is hidden and forbidden knowledge. The same people who have tricked and fooled us, tricked and fooled you, and made you think that you were the master race. They made you think that everyone was under you. They created this thing called white supremacy. You embraced it. Let it go now. You, if you want to sojourn, you have to free yourself from all of this witchcraft that they have performed upon all of us. They created doctrines of demons and devils and they put it in your books. They created names for their gods and put it in their books. And if you keep calling upon those names, you have denied the only name that is present in your book that you should worship and glorify. And his name is Yahuwah. So here we are. No more sex. Now genetic manipulation. There is an ancient text that is outside of the scriptures that exposes this event. It speaks of Anu, Anunnaki, the same one that's in your Bible. The Bible says the sons of Anak, 
He said, destroy them. It speaks of these Anunnaki and it gives you a visual representation of Anu or Anunnaki as being a serpent creature, a seraph with multiple wings. Anunnaki means those from the heavens came. When they were cast here to the earth, Satan and his angelic force. They had to till the grounds themselves. They had to dig. They had to build the cities for themselves and the toil was too great. They were not used to relating to the material realm. So they took a creature that was indigenous to the earth. Here you have it here, the chimpanzee. And they spliced this chimpanzee's DNA with their DNA. Remember the chimp is very close to us, only 1.3% off. So they spliced their DNA into the chimp and brought forth a new hybrid species, a workforce. We know that Yahuwah cleansed the earth from before. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, and the spirit of Yahuwah hovered over the waters of the earth and he called the sun and the moon back into being. He didn't create it then. He called it back into being. Let there be light. Turn on the lights. And the lights came on. And he separated the waters in the firmaments and brought forth dry land. Then what happened? How did these creatures still survive all of that? When you go to the book of Job, you find out that when Yahuwah questioned Satan, he says, where are you coming from? Satan says, I've been walking to and fro in the earth. Where did they hide in the earth? I watched a series in Ancient Aliens and they showed all of these structures underground that they found. Whole cities and civilizations could live there. So they hid under the earth during this first deluge. And when Yahuwah separated the waters in the earth, they came back on dry land. These people and the workforce that they created were already on the earth. Continue to part eight. Shalom.